Hello and back again to more Bitwig Controller API programming fun. In the sixth part of this tutorial, we want to look into one concept you are missing to get a full API Pro. This is the concept of banks. And specifically, we will look into track banks and how you also can use cursors with that to monitor selected tracks. Before we look into that, I did some further optimization and cleanup of the previous code. In the last tutorial, we refactored the MOXF hardware file and I did another file, which I call the transport handler. And in that, I put all the code which was related to the transport uh, control. So you see our main file is now very smart and thin. And what is new is this transport handler, new transport handler, and I give in as a parameter the create transport. If you look into that file, you see we create another class. It's a transport handler class. We get the transport parameter. We store the parameter. We have the previous demonstration code and we say mark interested for the playing property as you saw last time. And I also added the property for the record state. And then you see in the handle MIDI function, this was now our previous on MIDI function, which is now also a method of this transport handler. And in there, I reworked the code a little bit. I check first, is it a node on? If not, we go out. And then is it a down or up press? And the only difference is that we have return value. So if we handle that specific command in this function, I return true. If we did not handle it, I return false. So give other handlers, we might add to the code also a chance to handle the code. And this is something I put then here in this new handle MIDI function. This handle MIDI function is now giving in here instead of the previous one in our MOXF hardware. And in there, we check first this transport handler. And if it got handled in there, we return. And if not, we give out an error and say this MIDI command was not processed. Back to track banks. What is that and how does it work? We already talked about this controller host on starting from there. You can create all the important objects which you need to work with. We started with looking at the uh, transport object and there are further objects which are also pretty easy to understand. For example, we have an application which gives you functions like send some key commands or stuff like that. We have functions to show panes in the arranger, trigger different functions in a mixer, access the groove features and also the project. I will not dive into explaining all of them. This would be go on for ages this tutorial if you would do that. But I just wanted to them to mention as a starter for you and they are all pretty simple to use pretty similar to the transport. But there is another area which works with banks and this is something you need to understand first. So this is the area of tracks and the devices and the remote control parameters, which are part of the devices, scenes, clips, and also the browser. They all use this banking concept. So we need to understand that first. What is a bank? For example, if we have, let's say, 54 tracks in our current project, there is no controller on the market which gives you 54 volume faders, for example. So normally you get eight, let's say, or if you have a larger device, you might get 16 or up to 32, but then it's also the end of the game. What you need to do is you need to give the user an option to go up and down of a kind of a window inside of that bank. So you can cannot access it at all, but we'll have this kind of window, which is called a page. And here in this example, I show we have one to N tracks, let's say 54, and we're currently showing eight tracks, the number 16 to 23. And Bitwig helps you very much with creating such a bank. And the only thing you basically have to decide how large your page should be. So you don't have to use eight. You cannot say, I want to have four or six or 16. It depends on how much controls you have on your controller or your could also use multiple controllers and create one big script for them. Then you could have bigger pages. That's completely up to you. All these banks that exist in API has the same interface. They give you a lot of features. The first one is the get size of bank, which is a bit misleading from the naming side because it's not the size of all tracks, for example, in the track bank, but instead it's the size of a page. So if I would say I my page size should be eight, then this would return 
8. Then there are functions to navigating inside of your bank so you can move one page forward and one page backward and you can get an item in one page for example if we have eight items in such a page we can get to these eight items with the indices of zero up to seven and the item count now gives you really all items so back to our example of 54 tracks this would return 54 and also there is a cursor index so this follows the variable of the currently selected item which means now also over all item if we would have our window let's say starting with number 16 17 and so on and the 17th track would be selected which would be number one in our current window it would return number 17 so let's look what we did so far with the mox f we used the keyboard here and the pitch band and modulation and also implemented the navigation and there are some other widgets which send information so which are usable for for such a script we have eight buttons but they are a little bit strange because the upper ones they send absolute values and the lower ones send relative values you have also the option to switch for different parameter sets but i think we will not use it because you switch it up there and you switch it down there but it's also up to you to modify that we have 12 buttons down here which can be pressed and you get the information we have a big wheel here with two buttons we have six buttons here who send data strangely not the seventh and eighth no idea why that is the case and we have here a mute and a solo button which also send data all the others don't send anything if we enable this door mode here on the mox f so what we now need to decide is how we want to facilitate all these uh, knobs and buttons to control the tracks normally you would go with eight but since they behave differently and are also navigated a bit differently i thought hey why not go go for uh, four another reason for that is also that we have here six so if you want to have a direct selection of of the eight we would miss two buttons here as well so let's go with four and we can then if we only use four we can say okay let's control here on the upper part the panorama and on the lower part let's control the volume we have both available at the same time we can have a direct selection of these four tracks by using those four knobs and we also need some buttons to move the page up and down so let's use the latest two knobs to move current page so what we need to implement is first to control the change of the panorama for these four tracks and also the volume and then we need to have those buttons for selecting the next and previous bank page selecting a track in the current bank and finally the mute and solo functionality Okay, so creating a track bank is not as easy as creating a transport because uh, there are a lot of different methods available which you could call and what is the difference between them. What you need to understand first is we have different types of tracks in Bitwig. We have instrument tracks, MIDI tracks, hybrid tracks, the effect tracks and the master track. And this is basically reflected in all those different functions. So the first two give you the option to monitor the normal in air quotes track so the hybrid MIDI and audio tracks and the last one gives you the option to monitor only the effect tracks and the third one create main track bank gives you the option to monitor everything so you get all the different track types including the master track in such a bank and here you see also the option if you want to implement a hierarchical navigation which means that that you can navigate the groups and you can move inside a group and then you will see only the tracks which are inside of the group what we will use for that example is the main track bank which gives us everything because it's the simplest and uh, the most straightforward which we can deal with and you see it will have three parameters they are all pretty similar to all of them because uh, via the track bank you can also get access to the sense and you can get access to the scene so you have already to decide here at that stage how much sense you want control and how much scenes you want to control and for our example because it's pretty 
pretty straightforward what you learn today to transfer that to scents and scenes we will just leave that at zero and also with the mox app we don't have enough buttons or stuff to control it but you can add that if you want to do back to the code and the reason as i made this reorder with the transport handler is we want to add now more functionality and the first thing we want to have is something similar like a track handler so we first include here this new file our track handler with deals with that one and then we also want to have the track handler in there we need to create it so we say we have a track handler and the first parameter will be our main track bank and we will also create a cursor a cursor in this example the cursor track follows always the selected track and for this cursor track you need to give them an id which is only used internally by bitwig so it will not show up but the second name will also show up in bitwig which I will show you later on and there you have then the option to do some pinning so if you pin such a cursor track it will not move anymore when you change it in Bitwig so that is a chance to use multiple controllers which control different things in Bitwig and the next parameters are also again the sense and the scenes which we will leave to zero and if you set this to true if you then change the cursor track in Bitwig it will also be reflected in this cursor track so you you can decide do you want to connect this cursor track to the one in Bitwig or do I want to have a separate cursor track which only controls a selected track on your device. So we have these two parameters going in there and we will also need to add some code here if we here handle the MIDI for when we turn the knob so we can control the volume and the panorama and the solo and the mute. So we need to call that too. So what I also did is add all the note numbers of the available buttons which we looked at and also add the knobs but the knobs send now not notes they send CC commands and so we already have these values also available and can use those constants and don't have to deal with those numbers. Here is a track handler code which I wrote and you see there is a constructor code. We have the track handler and we get as we saw this track bank and cursor track. We both store them into properties so we can have them available in the methods of this class. What we do here is we move over this track bank and the size of a bank as we remember is the size of the page. So this will give us four. We will go four times through that and here we use this get item at function to get the first track the second and so on and this tracks and for that we want to monitor the panorama and we want to monitor the volume so we get back a property and for that property we can finally call mark interested and what i also did was to set an indication an indication means that you tell bitwig that you are controlling this parameter of this property and bitwig should highlight it we can already have a look at this and if if we reload it oh yeah that's also something i wanted to mention if you change a file which gets included in the, the main crypt file bitwig is not automatically reloading your code so you have to reload it manually type control and r to reload it it only does the auto reload if you change the main javascript file we have reloaded that and if we show up here the mixer you will notice that we get a color indication here for the panorama of these four tracks in the page and also the color indication for the volume and also get the same color indication here in these uh, tracks moving on here in the code so we did the indication and we did the mark interested and now we tie this cursor track to our track on the device so this means if i change a state here in bitwig i move the selection it will also have the selection on the device you see that if I for example click down here on a lower track you will see that the page automatically moves as well so now on my device I controlling the tracks number five to eight so this is also a nice feature so we don't have to care about this ourselves it's also already done automatically by Bitwig and the last two is just monitoring the solo and the mute now we want to have this only for the cursor track because 
we only have two buttons and one to control a solo and a mute of the currently selected track. So that's the setup we need to do and tell Bitwig what we plan to do. Now we have this handle MIDI function. Let's start with the buttons. So here in this handle MIDI function, I say when it's a note on command, because all the buttons using note on commands, I use this first row control buttons. The first one gets the first track and selects it and so on for all four. Let's see if that works. So I will select it on a hardware, click on one, two, three, four and five in the currently selected bank. So this works nicely. We will look at the more code and here on the five and six, I also use those functions to move the page, to move the page down and forwards. So let's also try that. You see currently that one here is selected. And if I press number button five, we move to the first one. If I press the sixth again, we can move to the right. We also have the solo and the mute button. This is now working on the selected track. Currently we have number five is currently selected. Pressing mute, pressing solo, selecting another track, selecting another track, mute, solo, so this is already the first part. Then we need to deal with our controller knobs. There are channel controller commands. So we need to deal with that. And as I said before, the upper four knobs are sending absolute values. So they send the values of zero to 127 and the lower ones are sending relative values. Let's start first with the simple ones. So we get here again, the track, we get the panorama uh, property and then we we can set it. And this is a nice feature also from Bitwig that you can set the resolution. You could also have faders with higher resolution. If you would, for example, have a fader which sends a thousand different steps, then you would just say here 1000 and Bitwig would do the translation to the internal volume number automatically for you. So this controls the volume. Let's first have a look at that. Back to Bitwig, controlling the volume of the first controlling volume of number five, six, seven, and also on track eight. So now it gets a little bit complicated because there are different ways how you can encode relative values. And maybe let's have a printout so we will see what that actually does. So if I output data two here, if we now move our knob, we will see numbers and move it to the right first. And you will see how if I faster move it, there are higher numbers. If I move it slowly, there are lower numbers. If I move it to the left, we're starting from 65. And if I move it faster, it gets up. This means we also have a speed control. If you move the knob faster, we, can, we have the chance to change the value also faster, which is a nice feature. And to calculate this, it's not that difficult. If it's larger than 64, we make it negative. And Bitwig also has a function for that. You can increase the value. And since the first one we made negative, Negative, it will also count downwards. So that's already changing then the value depending on how fast you move that. Let's have a look at that. This works now for the panorama. I move it very slowly. I move it fast and this is also working. So now you're really ready to do your own development. Uh, you know how banks work, how you apply this to track banks. And next time we will look into the remote control parameters, how we can handle that. And also how you can implement a kind of a mode concept so you can use the buttons for different things if you enable a different mode. And until then, do your own coding and write some funky code.